The first laser beam attack in history occurred on August the 4th, 2019. And I'm being serious, I have not lost it. Laser beams really do exist and have already been used in battle. <laughs> Specifically, we are talking about the demolition of a combat drone in the Syrian war. The drone belonged to the Syrian rebels, and who do you think fired the laser beam? Which country could be advanced enough to have laser weapons ready to fire? Many of you will guess the United States, or maybe China or Russia. But believe it or not, the first country to use laser beams in human history was Alderaan. No, I'm kidding. It was Turkey. It was Turkey. By now, I guess your head has already exploded. How is it possible that laser beams exist? And how is it possible that Turkey has them before any other country? Since when is Turkey a tech leader? And how exactly do laser beams work? Don't worry, in this video, we're going to explain everything. Let's get cracking. The question many of us are asking ourselves right now is, who needs Netflix in the year 2020? If everything we hear in the news is real, it's almost as if Alex Jones has possessed us all. This year, we have seen the SARS coronavirus 2 pandemic, the seizing of Hong Kong by China, and even Bruce Willis dressed up as Doraemon. <laughs> Things couldn't possibly get any weirder, right? Well, in case all of this wasn't enough, we're now bringing you laser beams. We've seen them in hundreds of movies and now they're a reality. And many of you will be thinking, but apart from cutting, what advantage do laser beams have over, let's say, ordinary missiles? Well, lots. Basically, a laser beam travels at the speed of light, which means it is practically impossible to dodge. <laughs> is the clear definition of a perfect shot. In fact, thanks to laser beams, Turkey was able to take down a moving drone with complete precision. And you'll say, but how do laser beams work? Well, that is why we're going to have to talk about quantum physics. And please don't leave yet, it's not going to be as boring as your physics classes in high school. For that reason, Javier Santiola has advised us in the making of this video, and I'd like to apologize to Javier for how I just pronounced his name. He is one of the most famous physics YouTubers in Spanish. If you want to take a look at his channel, it's in Spanish and the link is here. But that's not all. He's also one of the scientists who discovered the Higgs boson. In other words, we're talking about the real deal in the world of physics. But before we talk about science, we need to talk about politics. Because, my visual poll amigos, Turkey is kind of NATO's bad boy. That is, if NATO was the classic school in a 1980s film, Turkey would be the class thug, the one who's always looking to pick a fight with everyone. For example, Turkey gets along really badly with Greece, which is also a NATO member. And the United States, which would be the captain of the American football team in the school scenario we were talking about, does not sell weapons to Turkey. And since the Turks can't buy guns from the United States, what do you think they're doing? Well, here is a clue. Turkey says it bought Russia's S-400 air defense system to use it, not to put it aside. Now this may seem insignificant, but this news is actually very important. At the end of the day, Russia is NATO's antagonist, and Turkey, which is a member of NATO, is buying weapons from them. That is something that we asked NATO Secretary General Jens Soltenberg when we interviewed him last year. And, and of course, these new uh, um, uh, S-400 uh, air defense systems, uh, which are Russian, will not be integrated into NATO's integrated air and missile defense. There will be a standalone thing outside NATO's uh, air defense system. But not only that, Turkey is one of the countries that spends the most money on its military. In fact, they have the second largest army of all the NATO countries after the United States, at least as far as the number of soldiers is concerned. Of course, when we talk about defense, soldiers aren't everything. Technology and weaponry are becoming increasingly more important. And in that aspect, Turkey has never been a leading player. Think of it this way. Although it is a country that has 80 million inhabitants, it only has the same level of GDP as the Netherlands. And that's why it's so amazing that they pioneered laser beams. How is that possible? Why does Turkey have laser beams? How do they work? Today, we're going to answer this question. But first, let's look at some history. NATO's bad boy. Before we go any further, I want you to take a look at this map. 
This is the Bosphorus Strait and belongs to Turkey. However, this strait is the only direct access to the Mediterranean that Russia could have. For centuries, Russia has wanted to control it and Turkey won't let them. Both countries do not know the meaning of the word diplomacy. And this explains why Russia and Turkey have been sworn enemies for centuries. What does all this mean then? Well, during the Cold War, it meant a lot. Basically, Turkey was the most anti-Soviet country in the world. And that's why, in 1952, they joined NATO. Ultimately, NATO was a military alliance to defend itself against the Soviet Union. And Turkey had a very large army and plenty of anti-communist credentials to be received by NATO with open arms. So what's the problem? Well, as we said before, Turkey is the bad guy in class and they don't get on with anybody. Think about it. Turkey has a long and rich imperial past. For centuries, Turkey was known as the Ottoman Empire and dominated a huge territory. This imperial past left many dead along the way, including a genocide against the Armenians, clashes with the Kurdish minority, and an ongoing conflict with Greece over the island of Cyprus. And you'll say, is this really a problem today? Well, the truth is, yeah! In 1974, Turkey invaded the island of Cyprus. Since then, the island has been divided into two halves. On one, they speak Turkish, and on the other, they speak Greek. As you can imagine, Greece, which is also a member of NATO, does not get along with Turkey. This all helps explain why, in the 1970s, the United States said to Turkey, OK there, Turkey, we're going to protect you, but since we don't trust you at all because of your inherent bad boyness, we're not going to sell you any guns. Goodness knows what you do with them. And I'd like to apologize to all the Americans for the accent. But anyway, Turkey is officially an ally of the United States, but can hardly buy any weapons from them. And what do you think Turkey's answer was? Well, righto then. Since you won't sell me your guns, I guess I'll just go ahead and create my own arms industry. And the problem, apart from the fact that I can't do a Turkish accent, well, Turkey doesn't have any Silicon Valley or anything that looks remotely like it. So what happened? For decades, the most remarkable thing Turkey had were the Jobaria missile launchers, the biggest ones in the world. <laughs> But apart from that, no one has ever said, oh, Turkish military technology, give me 10 of them. In fact, in the 2000s, the Ankara government began to shelve all these military programs. After all, why did they want so many weapons if they were already protected by NATO? Interestingly, these were the years when Turkey began to grow economically. It was even discussed whether they could join NATO outright. But all this changed in 2016. So what happened in 2016? Well, this. <laughs> They will pay a heavy price for their treason. Turkish soldiers surrender on Bosporus Bridge after overnight military coup fails, ending with 250 dead as President Erdogan vows revenge. Exactly. We are talking about the coup against Turkey's President Erdogan, a coup that many believe was set up by Erdogan himself, an event that gave him the perfect excuse to change the country's constitution and secure even more power. Since then, Erdogan's new goal seems to be the restoration of the Ottoman Empire. To control Rule North Africa again so that the whole world would be afraid of the Turkish army. And at the same time, the Turkish army would also be afraid of Erdogan. And that's why he took measures like this. Erdogan purges army and judiciary after failed coup. To give you some idea, after this military purge, there was only 20 fighter pilots left. That is, Turkey has 200 fighter planes, but only 20 people who can actually fly them. And something similar happened in the other divisions of the army. Basically, by removing all the factions that might be against him, Erdogan has been left with a skeleton army. And you're probably wondering, so how is he going to expand the new Ottoman Empire without any soldiers? Well, Erdogan has tried to buy weapons from the United States. Turkey seeks US Patriot missiles to deter Russia and Syria. And, as you can imagine, America's answer was, let's see Erdogan, kiddo. What do you want those Patriot missiles for, huh? You're not gonna use them to kill Kurds again, are you? I've got my eye on you, you know. Far from falling in with Erdogan, Trump has put new sanctions on Turkey. Why? Punishment for mistreatment of the Kurdish minority. A minority that is an ally of the United States. To give you some idea, the Kurds have been instrumental in the fight against ISIS. So Trump is not going to sell weapons to Turkey to attack his own allies. As I told you earlier, Turkey is still NATO's bad boy. Yes, we have his back, but we're interested in keeping track of him as well. So once again, NATO is protecting Turkey, but doesn't want Turkey to have its own weaponry, which explains news like this. Spain extends air defense system deployment in Turkey. So what does this all mean? Well. Spain is an ally of the United States 
and has Patriot missiles. NATO has told them to set up a few to protect Turkey's border with Iran. But that's all. And as you can imagine, that doesn't make Erdogan very happy. He wants to have his own weaponry and his own military doctrine. In fact, Turkey is a player in the Libyan war and they have their own alliances and their own strategy separate from NATO. That's what they need weaponry for. So as the United States continues its policy of not selling them weapons, Turkey has reopened its military industrial development programs. And those programs include technology like this. <laughs> Turkey creates laser weapon system to strengthen military. So think about it. Laser beams have many advantages. They are a very promising technology to defend against anti-aircraft attacks. And to operate them, you need a new military personnel. I mean, Erdogan has the perfect excuse to hire new soldiers who are loyal to him. But the question is, what are laser beams? What are they used for? Well, listen up. <laughs> Laser beams, the new gunpowder. So we are talking about one of the most important inventions of the century. So much so that there are up to five Nobel laureates who have been awarded for the development and applications of lasers since 1964. And the applications are many and varied from barcode readers in metallurgy, in medicine, in optics, or for aiming at the goalkeeper of the rival team. And of course, yes, also to use in war. It is because of its special features that you're going to freak out. And behind it is not an ordinary man, but possibly the best physicist of all time, Albert Einstein and his development of quantum mechanics. <laughs> But first, let's talk about the laser. The laser is light, normal, ordinary light. Yes, like the sun or the bathroom light in your house. But of course, you're not going to use a flashlight to shoot down drones. No, because that would be just silly. The laser is light. Yes, but it's a very special light. In physical, which is the language that physicists speak, we say that it is monochromatic, coherent, and focused. So hold on a minute, Grant. What does all this mean? Monochromatic means of a single frequency, a single color. Focused is that it does not disperse and coherent is the way that the waves march to the beat. That is, the laser is composed of very neat light particles. Perhaps the best way to understand the difference between a flashlight and a laser beam is to compare it to an army. The light of the torch would be like the army of the barbarians in Gladiator everyone's on their own. In the laser army, we would have to imagine perfectly formed soldiers, marching in order, synchronized, running like clockwork. To continue with the metaphor, it would be like the Roman army, perfectly organized with everyone marching in unison. And this is thanks to the quantum properties of matter, and in particular, the layered structure of atoms, something that could only be understood with the advent of quantum mechanics. Einstein saw in this new conception of atoms, this interesting application that could only be realized over the decades after he had died in the 1960s. With its unique properties, the laser is able to concentrate a lot of energy in very little space, and also in pulses of short duration, which massively multiplies its power. We're talking in the order of 10 raised to 23 watts per centimeter squared. And this is thanks to a revolutionary invention applied to the laser for which Moru and Strickland won the Nobel Prize in 2018. <laughs> With a high-powered laser like this, you can easily shoot down a drone, deflect a missile, or even send a ship to Alpha Centauri, among other things. And so we enter a new era, the age of the laser. The Sith had better watch out. But as you can imagine, Turkey is not the only country to have laser beam weaponry. They're the first to have tried them in a real combat scenario, but the United States has its own weapons. Without digging too deep, in May 2020, while we were all confined at home, the US Navy carried out its first laser beam test aboard a ship. China is also doing its own research in this field. So now we're going to hand the question over to you. Do you think we're looking at a new way of making war? To what extent will laser beams end up replacing missiles and rifles? And more importantly, will Turkey end up building its new Ottoman Empire? Leave your answers for us in the comments below. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit a like if you did. And don't forget to subscribe for brand new content from us every week. If you hit the little alarm button down there, you'll be able to get updates for when they come out. Also, don't forget to check out our friends at the Reconsider Media Podcast. They provided the vocals in this episode that were not my dull at tones. Also, this channel is possible because of Patreon and our patrons on that platform. Please consider joining them and supporting our mission of providing independent political coverage. And as always, 
I'll see you in the next video. Can I get my laser gun knife, please? If you want to learn more about politics and world affairs and hear some more of my lovely voice, come check out the Reconsider podcast, where we don't do the thinking for you. Find Reconsider at www.reconsidermedia.com or on Apple or Google Play or your favorite podcast.